the quest for the great red box of conquest featuring Queen Armadala continues straight into Sector 4 and your boy Scribble's got you back. Don't worry, you need to get these feats done. I'm your man, let's do this. So, taking a look at the Sector 4 feats, we can see the following. We need to attempt to afflict ability blocks 60 times. We need to gain stealth 120 times. We need to defeat 50 enemies with our Imperial Troopers. And we need to win at least 14 battles with a full squad of Rebel units. All of these feats are very, very doable, thankfully. Rebels, we've got a massive, really powerful faction for. Imperial Troopers have got two phenomenal teams. Stealth, we can do in one battle. And attempt to inflict ability to block we can get as we progress. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a little bit of data disk discussion. Now, we're going to break this up again. You know my stance on this if you've seen any of my previous videos. Zealous Ambition is the way forward. If you're trying to maximize the number of stealths that you want to get done in one battle, highly recommend you don't equip them. Remove them for now so you're dealing as little damage as possible, but it's not a big deal. What we're going to do right now is I'm going to show you a battle where you'll be able to get 120 stealth in one battle and a couple of your ability blocks as well just by timing out this battle. Yes, it'll cost you some energy, but it'll save you heartache in the long run. Let's roll the clip. So you want to find yourself a Mon Mothma node, have anything that's going to increase your survivability. And we're going in with a Darth Maul leadership with the Zeta on his lead. It will start all of your stealth, all your Sith allies in stealth. And every time you either get crit or you evade an attack, you are going to re-stealth. And that's it. Put it on auto basic. I've chosen to use characters like Bastila Shan and Darth Talon and Count Dooku over here because they can apply ability blocks on their basics just like that to count towards the feats. But essentially this team, if you've got stuff like heal over time, if you've got a protection recovery data disc, anything like that should be able to outlast. The key thing I would say is make sure that you leave Savage Opress as one of your characters here. The reason for that is he is incredibly survivable and quite honestly, the enemy team can't kill him. They can't. They, they'll probably eventually chew through the rest of your units, but they cannot deal with Savage because the damage output that they deal is not significant enough to actually kill him. They'll be able to hurt him a bit. Mine in this instance is Relic 5. He doesn't need boatloads of good mods or anything like that. Just have him tanky. Have him tanky, put it into defense and health and protection and stuff like that. Standard modding for Savage, really. And you'll just be able to have fun. You can sit back, you can go make yourself a cup of coffee, pull up a pew, get a good book on, maybe put on the Tribe Talks podcast and listen to myself, Wolfie and Carthrick talk about all of our issues in Galaxy of Heroes. And you'll have a really good time. You see, we lost Basti Fallen there, but honestly, it doesn't matter. Every single time that they're critting us, we are stealthing constantly. If you really want to guarantee that this doesn't lose, you throw in someone like Malgus. You can throw in Malak. My only concern with throwing in Malak is you will actually fear the enemy team a lot. And that fear is going to slow down the number of attacks that they do, do to you. You want them just constantly mass assisting your units and that causing you to stealth. It's it's a really straightforward and easy way of getting it done. And like I said, you'll be able to get a rather moderate amount of ability blocks done to the enemy team as well, which sort of just helps with our other feet. Lovely. So you can see by the end, the last five seconds here, it's just Savage still standing. He's still stealthing and they can't kill him. It's as simple as that. Easy, easy feats done. Next up, we're going to take a look at Imperial Troopers, and there's two teams that I really recommend you use. One is a relatively standard Veers lead team. Here we're going to be using, you know, Veers and Piet and Dark Trooper, Moff Gideon and Stark in this instance. And I just go against the bonus node, against the Geos. You're going to be farming Datacron materials. You can do this as you progress through the stage, but honestly, you need to farm Datacron materials anyway, so there's no rush to get this done. Having standard Zealous Ambition data discs will make this an absolute cakewalk because you're going to be doing so much damage. Our good boy Veers over there, his AoE has an AoE ability block on it as well, so you can actually work on the ability block feats as you're going through. It's a twofer, guys. What's not to like about that? You get to get your Imperial Troopers, you get to get your ability blocks, you get to farm Datacron materials. What's not to like? We can also then go in with an Iden Verzio team. And the great thing about her is she starts with a bonus turn if you've got the right comp. So I'm using Scout Trooper and Storm Trooper and Death Trooper and Range Trooper. In fact, all of them are troopers and they're Imperial Troopers. There's no real ability block on this team that I'm aware of. There might be, but I'm kind of forgetting at the moment. But they, these guys will absolutely shred through the geos with your standard Zealous Ambition data disc setup. You'll be able to farm those datacron materials and get your kills at the same time. There's no point in trying to worry about maximum 
maximizing your kills and lowering the number of battles because you are still gaining Datacron materials. It's wonderful. Next up then is everybody's favorite faction or my favorite faction, let's be honest, the Rebels. The great thing about Rebels is there are so many teams that operate incredibly well within Conquest. I'm going to show you one here with Adrad. Adrad is a support and has a rather wonderful AoE. You can do that a lot. Then we also have stuff like a standard CLS team. This can also help with so much stuff. It doesn't have ability blocks, but you could throw in old Ben, for example. Um, and it'll just absolutely clear anything. Not as powerful because it doesn't have any support types, but it still absolutely shreds through Conquest just in general. Bonus turns at the start make things so much easier. Put on auto, you could easily get three, uh, three wins on the bounce with something like this. Bring him down to 70% energy, switch over to another Rebel team. Speaking of another Rebel team, those of you that have geared up your Captain Rex already will have a really highly effective Phoenix team that you can use. Captain Rex is also a support type, so he's able to do boatloads of damage and he's going to be assisting all of the time. So you can shred through this bonus node of Geos in lightning fast pace. Really, really good and easy. And of course, who can forget the fact that we do in fact have a Rebel GL under GL Leia Organa. I've thrown in Old Ben here. Old Ben has got an AoE ability block. Again, you don't need to worry about trying to find a node in which to perfectly get 60 ability blocks in one battle. Farm the bonus node and get Datacron materials and just gradually over time get these ability blocks done. It's not a waste of your energy. It's wonderful. And you'll get all your kills done. Fantastic. So moving swiftly on from the sector feats, let's go ahead and check out the boss mode and the mid sector boss. So mid sector boss, we've got a BAM scoundrel team over here. We need to win with Jedi Knight Cal Kestis surviving and we need to win without using any Jedi, Sith or unaligned force users. This one is also rather easy and you can take the same approach and just throw in Cal Kestis and then take him out and use the exact same team. Let's break this down. So I'm going in with Dash Rendar. I'm taking in Han. Chewie, we're taking in Jedi Knight Cal Kestis, and I think I threw in IG-11 in that team just there. There's no unaligned forces, there's no U Je no Jedi, no Sith. We've got our um, Cal Kestis in there just to fulfill the feat, but I've been over this before. Dash Rendar with Zealous Ambition just does boatloads of damage. The enemy are rather chunky, and you will find that that nest will hang on for quite some time, but honestly, it's nothing to truly, truly worry about. Oops, sorry, I paused the video there. Nothing to truly, truly worry about. The great thing about Cal Kestis is, yes, he does have the ability to attack under protection when he has got Repost up, which is when you do that first swap over to the dual lightsaber form, but also he is able to instant kill nest. So if you can't actually get up to the point where you kill her, then eventually you will sort of reach that insta-kill and she'll be gone, right, for good. So because we've got Chewie in here, we can place Tenacity down. Then between Han and Dash, you can actually keep Nest stunned for the whole time. It looks here a little bit like, oh, is Scribble actually going to be able to kill this Nest? Is she just going to tank forever and we're going to time out? No, of course not. That's not going to happen. As soon as she actually takes a turn, she is actually going to lose all that bonus protection and then we're just going to one tap her essentially. So we do keep on reducing her turn mate here thanks to uh, Han Solo's basic, but it's not really a big issue. And besides that, once we get up to the 30 stacks on Cal, we'll be able to insta kill her anyway. And yes, this will work even if you have a low gear Cal because Nest doesn't really get to take a turn. There you go. She takes a bonus turn and now she's dead. Take the exact same approach. Just drop out Cal Kestis and throw in another scoundrel, maybe Queel. Any scoundrel that's not an unaligned force user. I'm looking at you, cat. Moving on to the boss node, and this one is actually quite awful. It's Maul, and they all start with three stacks of Beskar armor, which means we can't crit them, and they're incredibly tanky. It's annoying. We need to win with Dark Trooper Moff Gideon surviving and win with only light side characters. I'm going to take the exact same approach as we did to the mid sector boss here, where we're going to have Moff Gideon as basically garnish for the rest of our team and then we're going to let the rest of the team carry the battle. So you can take the same approach with Dash but I've chosen to go here with an Adrad team because Adrad is rather fantastic with his AoEs as we've already seen. He'll just be able to basically clear the board straight away one turn straight out there kablamo. Remember you need zealous ambition for this to work. If you do also happen to have Leader's Resolve to give you extra stats to your leader, in this case Adrad, it makes it that much easier. Everybody dies basically. And then I've got Sortie who is also a support character with an AoE who can just shred face as well. I put Treyer in because Treyer is just useful in being able to isolate people. 
Cassian's in here because he's also a support type and is benefiting from Adrad's lead. That, that's it, guys. That's it. Now, if you don't happen to have that team, you can also get this done with just a standard-ish Treyer team. I'm just throwing in Moff Gideon with Treyer and Nihilus and Savage and Set for some reason. I would have been better off using someone like uh, Scion to get some additional turn meter here. The idea is that you isolate armor at the start and then do not hit armorer. Maul's leadership will force a taunt on the healthiest ally, but Isolate will stop that taunt from happening. So provided that person stays the healthiest, as in don't damage them, you will have your freedom to attack whoever you want. Now, Maul's five stacks of Seething Rage at the start is likely to kill someone. Not a whole lot we can do about that, but the rest of the team should be able to carry. The other good thing is, under Treyas' leadership, when the enemy attacks out of turn, they are going to be dealing damage to themselves, essentially. Nihilus is here just to get off a Juicy Annihilate. Treyer is a support type as well, so she gains lots of juicy, juicy benefits from the likes of Zealous Ambition and our leader's resolve in this instance. And yeah, that's that's kind of it, really, guys. You see, our, my Moff Gideon does take damage here, so those of you that have no gear on your Moff Gideon might struggle a little bit with this, which is why I really recommend going in with something like Dash Rendar or Adrad at the start to really just wipe the floor before the enemy gets to do anything. But this works, in my experience, perfectly well. As you see, it gets down to just Armourer eventually on her lonesome, and when that's the case, it's not a whole lot that the enemy team can do. Either we're going to get an Annihilate off of Nihilus, or Treya's just going to open up a can of whoop-ass. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Sector 4 in a nutshell. It is rather easy and juicy. I do hope that you guys are inching towards that red box. If you are and I have helped you in any way, please take a very quick moment just to like this video, consider subscribing to the boy Scribe if you haven't already, and uh, yeah. Big shout out to my wonderful patrons. You guys are freaking awesome. You guys are the nuts. I love y'all. All right, guys, until the very next video, peace out and may the force be with you.